Hey, what's cracking, fellas? It's your boy, Ante, coach of the Syracuse Sylveans, coming at you today with the long-awaited Week 2 matchup. I am a little bitter about this one because, not because of what happened in the game, but because I recorded this only for the audio to be completely horrendous and practically rendering the video unwatchable, so now I have to do a post-commentary again, which I wasn't thrilled about, so now... Uh, I put it off for a long time. I've, it's been so long. I've already recorded my week three matchup, so it's been a long time in the works, but I was just too like tilted to do it. But I'm gonna do it now because uh, it would be kind of weird to upload my week three match without uploading my week two match. So with all that out of the way, this is a draft classic league match. Uh, like I said, week two versus King BC, who is a long time, uh, I don't, I don't mean to say nemesis, we're not like arch rivals or anything, but definitely a long-time competitor who I've played multiple times over the course of the last, I don't know, it must be four or five years now at this point, so uh, definitely was excited to see a familiar face on the opposite side of the field. In terms of the matchup here, I'm running Expert Belt Infernape with, or not Expert Belt, Black Belt Infernape with um, Hazards and a Pivot and U-Turn. I'm running Hone Claws Mega Subtile with Focus Blast and then Dual Stab, uh, an Assault Vest, uh, Pivoting Electros, Choice Scarf Beware, Dragon Dance Gyarados, and a kind of weird Muse set, Weakness Policy with Agility and Nasty Plot, and then Stored Power and Thunderbolt. So uh, I predicted his team almost exactly if you happen to watch the team builder. I wasn't sure about Raikou, but the other five members of his team I was pretty positive he was bringing. And even the Raikou, I felt pretty certain about. So uh, it's good for me off like turn zero or whatever, because I, I expected literally every single one of these Pokemon and uh, predicted it almost perfectly. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, it was just up to me to try to execute my game plan uh, of either winning with uh, Mew or trying to win with Mega Sceptile and do a wall breaking with Beware and Gyarados. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to put it on slow speed, I guess. We're going to walk through the play-by-play. -play. I think I was probably expecting his lead of Rhydon. Again, I'm sorry this is post-commentary and it's been a while, so um, I'm not super positive on my thought process, but uh, I think I was expecting the Rhydon lead here, so I just went with my Infernape because I have hazards on it, and I thought he would be scared of the Grass Knot, but... He is not scared of the Grass Knot at all, and I just go for the U-turn to pivot out, expecting him to switch, but he just stays in and sets up his rocks, so that's definitely no good since I do not have a spinner on this team, but it is what it is, tomato, tomato. As he goes into the uh, Curum, and I manage to knock off his Choice Scarf, which is really great. Also, every single one of these Pokemon <laughs> has like a different spelling of my name, so it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty funny throughout the match and just waiting to, for him to reveal the Pokemon and seeing how many different ways he can spell my name. But this one is Daniel, Daniel, <laughs> the Kiram Black. But I do get rid of his Choice Scarf, which is really nice. It means that Mega Sceptile won't get randomly caught by an Ice Beam from Choice Scarf, uh, or Icicle Spear or whatever, Icicle Crash. But he only lands three Icicle Spears, which is good, because I can pivot out now. I'm running U-Turn instead of Volt Switch, because he has Volt Ups from Raikou, so that might look a little weird to you, but I didn't want to just give that thing a free Volt Absorb, and I just end up taking this thing out with a close combat, because I know for sure that I'm faster now, since he does not have his Choice Scarf. So now Manaphy comes out, which is a big problem. I do go into Sceptile, even though it's pretty obvious, and I'm nervous about getting burned, but uh, it does not end up happening. I am confident he's switching out here, so I just end up clicking Focus Blast, expecting the, um, the Skarmory, so... Uh, I kind of greed out here. I just go for it one more time, but do not end up getting it. I think someone said it's like a 49% chance to hit two in a row, but sadly uh, he got the 51% chancer and he manages to dodge the second one and take me out with a Brave Bird. So that was pretty greedy and not ideal because Mega Sceptile was, I mean, if you look at his team, once this goes down, he's pretty poised to just run house on the rest of his team. Obviously Rhydon can't do anything, Manaphy can't do anything. Uh, Skarmory would have been gone. Raikou, maybe if it had, I don't, it doesn't get hidden power anymore, so it would have to try to take me out with, like, um, what is it, Aura Sphere? And then Girder is obviously super tanky, as you'll see in a second, but really Girder would be the only thing standing between uh, Mega Sceptile and the victory. But sadly that was not to be, so we go back into Infernape, 
and uh, threaten this thing out with you know pretty much anything. I just end up clicking close combat here, take a good amount off of this girder, but not nearly enough. This thing is a beefy boy, so I have to go into Mew. I was expecting him to predict that and go for a knockoff, but I am weakness policy, so I was running some calcs, and I felt comfortable with this switch, even though it was super obvious, because I didn't think that um, I would be in danger of being knocked out, since subsequent knockoffs are gonna deal less damage, but that one did 51%, which is a whole lot, and then the next one, I go for an agility here, because I need to be able to outspeed Raikou if I want to actually sweep with this thing, which is what I'm trying to do here So I go for the agility which again looks pretty greedy, but I'm not like I'm not playing for differential in week two Obviously, I'm just playing to try to get the win So I could have just knocked this thing out But I wanted to try to actually win with this thing because if I knock him out here Then he just goes into Raikou and kills me anyways, so that was pretty greedy, but I felt like this was the play I had to go for if I wanted to win uh, I because I don't have like great switches into Raikou anymore because the Electros is pretty low and uh, Beware is not tanky at all. So yes, plus it outspeeds my entire team uh, except for Choice Guard Beware, but I didn't get any chip damage on it, so I can't actually knock it out. So probably could have just knocked him out, but his next knockoff ends up doing 31%, which is way too much, and puts me in range of Mach Punch. So unfortunately, Mew does go down to the Girder. Now it is Baloo's turn. Uh, I <laughs> I just end up clicking, I think, close combat here. Uh, nope, go for the Thrash, which is going to not take out this Skarmory, but the next one will. I'm definitely going to be faster than him since I am Choice Scarf, unless he was also Scarf. He wasn't going to be outspeeding me. But now he goes back into the Girder. I didn't get confused, so I just have to stay in here, sadly. If I got confused there, maybe something different would have happened. I could have gone into Gyarados or something, but... Um, I do just have to stay in and click it again, as now I'm going to go into Electros, just like desperately trying to, <laughs> desperately trying to kill this thing. I don't have Intimidate on Gyarados, which is coming back to haunt me now. I felt like if I wanted to get a sweep with this thing, I was going to need Moxie. I also don't have Bounce, I don't think. But, oh, so here I do manage to get a flinch, which... Uh, it just did 29% and he's at 29% so if I get the exact same roll I'll, I'll knock him out but similar to what I was just saying before it's week two I'm not playing for differential I'm playing for the win or to lose miserably so I end up just going for a dragon dance here because I need to be able to outspeed um, Raikou as he goes for thunder punch and does a whole lot to me even through my Wakanberry and then once again <laughs> puts me in range of knock punch so this thing is just running house on my entire team mock punch is doing uh, way too much damage even to Pokemon who resisted so that is less than ideal but now I'm going into Infernape. I guess he pities me here. He has a pretty easy switch into uh, Manaphy, but maybe he just felt bad that this uh, girder was just ruining his entire team. But, or ruining my entire team, I should say. But yeah, we see that Manaphy doesn't even get too hit, too hit KO'd by that, and I am definitely getting KO'd by whatever the heck it wants to go for. And now it is Beware versus the world. Uh, <laughs> maybe a chance if I get a whole lot of crits, but... Because uh, I should be faster than Raikou, so if I get a bunch of crits, then maybe, but I do not get the crit on the Manaphy, and I believe I just go down to a Scald here. So, that was my week 3 match, definitely, or sorry, that was my week 2 match, definitely disappointing, but like I said, I, I feel like I played pretty greedy. I shouldn't have thrown Sceptile away like that, because I have, sort of have switch-ins to Skarmory. I could have gone into Electros or Mew or something. Uh, speaking of Mew, I probably shouldn't have hard switched him into Girder like that. Um, I could have sacked something else and then gone into Mew, and then if he still wanted to go for a knockoff, that would be fine with me. Uh, I think the fact that I switched into it and then I switched into an attack and took damage and then took damage again, that put me in range of knockoff and ended up costing me that sweep. I don't know if Mew would have actually won this game. Uh, Thunderbolt at plus two maybe kills Manaphy. It depends on his spread. Judging by how uh, close combat from Infernape was not a two-hit KO, even though I was um, Black Belt, I think he probably had defense investment or a lot of HP investment or both. But um, yes, uh, I, I just felt kind of disappointed in myself because I predicted his team, like I said, almost perfectly. Um, 
but I still wasn't able to capitalize and just played like super greedy <laughs> and tried to go for a bunch of sweeps. I just brought a bunch of boosting Pokemon, which is not a super conducive team composition. So definitely gonna try to learn from my mistakes in this week and move forward through the rest of the season. Try to have a more distinguished win condition. I feel like that's super important for draft battling. Just making sure you have like a concrete win condition and then the rest of your team will unfold from there trying to support that win condition. So I, I should have really committed to having Sceptile as the win condition, maybe brought a defensive Gyarados, uh, Wish Passing Mew, you know, just different things that would have supported it as opposed to competing for it with a sweeping spot or for the sweeping spot. So um, yeah, definitely GG to King BC, played well, um, just was able to make safe plays pretty much every turn and still got me with the 3-0 so definitely well done to him well prepped and well played uh, but that is going to do it for me i think so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and as always i hope you're having an excellent day and staying safe and healthy during this trying pandemic but this has been Entei and kraken nation out <laughs>